Time now for a news review of this bulletin. Hello, welcome to the news review. Germany has warned of growing risks of a hard Brexit amid a lack of common ground and trade talks between the UK and the European Union. The German Foreign Minister Heiko Maas says that Britain is moving away from a jointly agreed political declaration on key issues. The top diplomat also criticized the British government's refusal to extend the negotiation deadline beyond the end of the year, considering the current coronavirus crisis. Irish officials have also called the current timeline for a British-European trade deal virtually impossible. Britain is now focused on setting new trade talks with the EU after officially leaving the bloc in January. However, diplomats and officials say the negotiations which resumed last month, had hit an impasse, hardly yielding any progress. Marcus Papadopoulos, editor at Politics First, joins us from London. We also have Tony Gosling, who's an investigative journalist, joining us from Bristol. I'd like to welcome you both. So, uh, Tony Gosling, uh, what, are we, what are we looking at here when it comes to the UK? Does the UK want to go ahead with this, want to iron things out, or as Germany says, they're moving away from some key issues? Well, what we want is we want Brexit. We want our sovereignty back, and we're going to have it. Uh, at least that's according to Boris Johnson in the uh, December 2019 general election. And I think it would be very difficult politically now uh, for him to preside over a government that compromised. Uh, and and it's, this is what the Germans are now calling for. The Germans are now saying that we must halt Brexit because of the virus. Well, this adds fuel to uh, the most extreme theories that are saying that the virus was actually a reaction to uh, Brexit. And let's not underestimate the enormous uh, importance of the European Union plan and how important Brexit is. I think it's one of the most, uh, actually one of the biggest earthquakes in global politics for decades. Uh, the idea that this wonderful project, the European Union, uh, is not going to work and that Britain is going to be leading other countries away from it is an extremely bad idea for many very powerful people. I mean, I've met some Bilderbergers, for example, face to face. Uh, and when you mention the idea of splitting up the EU, they go crazy. Literally, the hairs on the back of their necks stand up. Then they turn around and walk away. The body language tell you, tells you this is their plan. This is their idea. It's nothing to do with democracy. Um, and the UK... Uh, Nothing that the UK does for the EU at the moment is going to be enough. Uh, I mean, there's no democracy in the European Union, and it shows by this German attitude that the, the leaders are appointed by an oligarchy. For example, Ursula von der Leyen, her job, and it was before she became president of the EU, uh, her job is to integrate all the militaries of the European Union. And she, that's why she got the job. She wasn't elected. She was appointed. In fact, it was very close that the the uh, European Parliament very nearly didn't put her in the job. So, uh, you know, people like Henry Kissinger, this oligarchy uh, that w well, some people call a new world order, has tried to create something called the United States of Europe. The only trouble is it's like America minus even more democracy than America. And that's why we're in this bind. But I, I, I'm very much hoping... Uh, although, you know, I haven't got a crystal ball that uh, we will be leaving on schedule and that the virus will not be used as an excuse to derail Brexit. And that's what the Germans don't like, that this is going to carry on despite the virus and we're going to be leaving at the end of the year. Do you think that's going to be the case, Marcus Papadopoulos, departure by the end of the year by the UK? Well, on the face of it, it is most peculiar. It is most unreasonable for the European Union to castigate the UK government for the uh, uh, slow progress that has been made between Brussels and London as regards a trade deal, securing a trade deal between the European Union and Britain by the end of the year. It is unreasonable and it is peculiar because Britain, like the European Union, has been in lockdown for nearly two months now as a result of COVID-19. And therefore, it was only inevitable that progress in securing a trade deal between London and Brussels would be slow as a result of what has happened, not just in Britain, but in the European Union over the last two months. However, 
I aver that there is a motive behind the European Union's castigation of Britain. And that motive is as follows. The European Union is attempting to de delay the final stage of Britain's withdrawal from the European Union in the vain hope that the UK will rejoin the European Union. And I emphasize in the vain hope because under no circumstances now will Britain rejoin the European Union. But alas, that is what the European Union is attempting to do by castigating Britain over its slow progress in negotiation talks with Brussels about securing a trade deal by the end of this year. And I believe that what is all the more alarming or what should be all the more alarming for the British public is that the European Union's attempts to delay the final withdrawal from Europe um, by Britain is being supported by numerous Labour MPs whom we can describe as disciples of Tony Blair. Such people are not only imbecilic, but they are demonstrating through attempting to uh, delay Britain's final act of withdrawing from the Euro European Union, they are, they are demonstrating their contemptuous attitude to the millions of traditional Labour voters who voted in 2016 to leave the European Union. They are demonstrating in general their contemptuous attitude towards the British people. And they are, con they are demonstrating their contemptuous attitude to the will of the UK electorate to have uh, voted in favour of Britain leaving the European Union. Many British people understand the reality, the true nature of the European Union, but they should be, in my opinion, far more alarmed by a Labour Party which is still attempting for Britain to rejoin the European Union, even though at the December 2019 general election, Labour was absolutely annihilated. Labour lost its heartlands in the Midlands and in the north of England because Labour did not respect the will of the British public. That uh, overall demonstrates why the Conservative Party is set to be in power in Britain for at least 10 years and very possibly for longer. Okay, Tony Gosselin, you have a point to make there in closing. Yeah, I just wanted to make a re I think it's a really important point. Now, uh, Germany like it like this. So what's happened is Britain has left all the institutions of the EU, uh, and that means we don't have any say whatsoever, but we're still actually being controlled by their court to a certain extent. Things uh, There's this transition at the moment where the, uh, uh, the mechanisms of the EU are still controlling much of the trade relationship, uh, and yet we don't have any say in, in those at all. This is the same situation that countries like Norway and Switzerland are in right now. That was the, that's the permanent um, uh, state with them, is that they have this kind of uh, one step removed relationship from the EU where they don't participate in the political side of things, but they do uh, have to obey the trade rules. And that's where we are, and of course the Germans particularly the Germans, because they've benefited immensely from the euro and from the EU, uh, want us to stay in that position. So they want us to stay exactly where we are. The last thing they want is for us to really completely sever all our ties with things like the European Court of Justice, who make these decisions for the whole of the EU, and including Norway, Switzerland and, and Britain right now. So that's why the Germans are saying this, is they, they want to freeze the situation right as it is, because that means we will have no say, and yet we are bound by the pre-existing, the old EU trade agreements. That's why they want us like this. And I think the, there are all sorts of questions about why Germany has benefited so much from the European Union. And one of the answers to those questions is that there is a document produced in 1942 by the Nazis uh, called the Europäischen Wirtschaft Gemeinschaft by their uh, economics department, basically the Nazi version of the British Treasury, uh, where they came up with this uh, uh, EEC plan 
for the management of occupied Europe, the economic management of occupied Europe. And many have pointed out that the whole program of the EU that's been rolled out first with the common market, the EEC, and then the European Union is analogous to this Nazi plan. So I think there needs to be some uh, fingers pointed and questions asked about the Germans. Uh, as they said, Maybe they should just back off and uh, this plan uh, originally being a Nazi plan is really not appropriate and I think there's more countries around the EU particularly Italy particularly Greece and the French and German publics too and individual parliaments that are seeing this old Nazi plan for exactly what it is thank you very much for that Tony Gosling investigative journalist thank you Marcus Papadopoulos editor at politics first and that does it for our news review thanks for tuning in